Hello, everyone. I hope you're having a good morning. Hi to Freddy and Mode and Lolly and Noriko and Yaroslav and all the people I see in the chat. Familiar faces. Amina. Dave is here to moderate the chat. We'll start in about 26 seconds after I make sure that everything is working properly. Hopefully, it is. We've we've had a good run lately. So, yes, everything seems to be working right. We'll start in 10 seconds, everyone. Uh, 10 seconds and we'll start this English lesson about nouns and verbs that are the same. Very, very handy. Well, hello and welcome to this English lesson about verbs and nouns that are the same. If you're confused about what this lesson will be about, you'll find out in a moment. Sometimes when you're learning English, you'll actually see verbs that are the same as the noun or a noun that is the same as the verb. That means a thing that is the same as the action that you do with the thing. Um if you don't know what I mean, I'll give you a quick hint. Um something like a hammer can be used to hammer. I actually talked about this briefly in a short English lesson earlier this week but today we'll look at a little over 30 different words that work as nouns and also work as actions or verbs. So, very, very cool. It makes it easier. It's kind of like a two for one deal. You learn one word and you get two words in your vocabulary that you can use. So, once again, welcome to this English lesson about verbs and nouns that are the same. Before we get started, I do want to mention a few things. One, hello to everyone. Uh, I said hello to some people but hello to Omar and Noriko and Abdallah and Uday and Tony uh, and Paco San, Wanda Prado, Mode Eggs, Freddie Wolf, Noriko, Lolly Lolly. As I scroll back, hi of course to Dave. Thanks for being here and moderating. Yaroslav is here as well. Freddie Wolf, Renildo, uh, Bera Vilson, Sophia. As I scroll back, I know I probably missed a few names. Sorry about that. It happens sometimes. I hope you're ready to learn a little bit of English. I'm ready to spend a little under an hour. We'll try to be done in about 50 minutes. Um uh, I'm ready to spend that amount of time teaching you as much as I can about the topic. Remember, if you have a question, please use the form to ask it and please do use the chat to have fun English conversations with each other. I'm I'm listening to the audio but I it's delayed so I'm watching myself take a sip of water but it sounds like everything is working well. Maybe we should get started. Should we do that? Let's do that. Let's get this lesson started. A bend and to bend. So, when you look at this spoon, you will see that there is a bend in the spoon. When you look at the spoon, it's not straight. There is a bend in the spoon. This means that someone must have bent it. Sorry to switch to the past tense but if you have a straight spoon and you want to put a bend in the spoon, you would bend the spoon. So, this is a an example um our first example of a noun. The bend in the spoon is pretty severe uh, because someone wanted to bend the spoon. So, there's the verb. So, Sometimes and in this lesson over 30 times, sometimes in English, the word that you use to describe the thing is the same as the action. So, if you want to bend a spoon, you grab it and you go like this and then there will be a bend in the spoon. Drink and to drink. Sometimes our kids uh want a drink. They'll say, I'm thirsty. Give me something to drink. I want a drink. Sometimes, it's nice to have a drink on a hot day. In order to do that, you use the verb to drink. You can actually say sentences like this in English. I'm going to drink a drink because I'm thirsty or he drank a drink because he was thirsty. We use the word drink to to refer to anything that you drink. Oh, I'm hot. I just ran five kilometers. I need a drink. I think I will go Uh, drink some water. So, there you go. We can use both of them. A kiss and to kiss. So, listen to how I use these sentences. Sometimes, someone will give someone a kiss. Sometimes, they will kiss someone. 
In the first sentence, I'm using it as a noun. You can give someone a kiss. I'll, I'll blow a kiss. I can give a kiss. But I could also walk up to Jen and I can kiss her. So, we have a noun, a kiss and we have the verb to kiss. So, I was going to put a banana here but I decided it was better to put a potato because I've used a lot of bananas lately in my lessons. But you can peel something and when you're done peeling it, the parts that you removed are the peel. When you peel a banana, when you use the action, when you peel it, you take the outside of the banana off. You eat the inside but then you don't eat the peel which is the noun. So, a banana has a peel, a potato has a peel and then in order to eat the potato or the banana, you need to peel it. And by the way, this um tool here is called a peeler, a potato peeler. It probably has other names as well but in our house, we would call this a potato peeler. So, you can peel a potato and when you're done, you will have potato peels on the counter. By the way, we also define the word peel. So, we say banana peel, we say potato peels. Um usually plural with potatoes because there's a lot of peels laying on the table when you're done. This is something we do a lot in the winter in Canada. Um sometimes I have to find my shovel so that I can go shovel. I use my shovel to shovel. <laughs> it sounds kind of funny when you say it that way but if it snows a lot, I might need to find my shovel so that I can go shovel the snow. Um maybe you have a large pile of dirt in your driveway and you need to move it. You would need to find your shovel in order to shovel the dirt into a wheelbarrow so you could move it. So, if you have a shovel, you can use it to shovel things. Always handy to have a shovel. I would say uh it's it's good to have uh if you need a basic set of tools, a shovel is a good one to have, a good garden tool to have. This is one that I looked at in my short lesson. I did a little short lesson. I talked about a uh, hammer. When you have a hammer which is a tool, you can use the hammer to hammer things. If my car had a dent in it, I could use a hammer to hammer out the dent. If I had a nail, I could use a hammer to hammer the nail in. And I did mention and I will mention here too, there are other verbs. You can pound a nail in. You can hit a nail in but you can also hammer a nail in. So, you can use a hammer to hammer. Very handy. Two words and you can use it or one word but you can use it in two different ways. Shampoo and to shampoo. So, shampoo is a liquid form of soap that you most often use for to wash your hair but you can also shampoo things. So, you can get carpet shampoo and you can shampoo your carpet in your house. You can shampoo your dog. Now, I will admit with this one, we more often use the word wash. I use shampoo to to wash my dog. I use shampoo to wash my hair but it would be correct to say I need to shampoo my hair uh before I go get a haircut. So, you can use it as a noun. You can use shampoo which is the actual bottle of cleaner. Um or um yeah, I'm saying liquid soap be- because the only word for shampoo is shampoo uh but you can use it to shampoo your hair. Another garden tool, this is a rake and you use a rake to rake things. So, a rake is a tool that you use if you want to smooth out the dirt. A rake is a garden tool that you use when you want to put a whole bunch of stuff into a pile you might rake it together. So, uh, as much as a shovel is handy, a rake is also very handy. Sometimes it's nice to rake stone flat. We often get puddles in our driveway, little pools of water and sometimes I will shovel some stone into the hole and then I will rake it flat with the rake. So, I will shovel some stone with the shovel and I will rake the stone flat with the rake. Very handy, handy tool to have in your garden shed. 
But hey, let's do a few questions. I see that Salem has become a member. Welcome, Salem. It's good to have new members. Um it is always fun to see that little green box pop up saying that someone has joined. So, thank you very much for being here. If you just give me one moment, I have to do one little thing here and I will keep talking while I'm doing it. I just need to adjust something and then we will look at the first question uh that we have on the list. So, if you submitted a question, I will get to it in a moment. If you're wondering what I'm doing, I usually uh let people know uh that I'm live and I forgot to do that. So, I'm just doing that quick for a moment. Hopefully, I do this correctly. We'll see. Okay, let's look at the first question. Looks like I have a few questions to answer from Ruslan. Hello, dear teacher Bob. No questions today. I just want to thank you for your great lessons and good mood you give us. Have a nice weekend and be healthy. Well, you too, Ruslan. I have to admit, I have been in a very good mood lately. I think that um everything's going well. I'm enjoying making YouTube shorts which are little lessons. If you noticed yesterday's, I obviously am enjoying that. So, um <laughs> Mode says, no problem, Mr. Bob. We could watch your mouse pointer move. Yes, when I have to adjust something. Um definitely watch that for your entertainment. Uh I am Pramamal. Hello, Guru. I don't have any specific question regarding today's topic but I've learned a lot of things from you. Not just language. Also, life lessons. Love from Tamil Neju. Well, you are welcome. Um I'm happy to teach English and I'm happy to share things about my life. So, let me see here. Ahmed says, hello, teacher. How are you? What is the difference between miss and leave? Like, I left your name or missed. Yeah, that's interesting. When you leave your name somewhere, it means like when I order a pizza, I leave my name. They ask for my name and I leave my name. That means they write it on a piece of paper and I also leave them my phone number so they can call me when the pizza is done. Um but miss is a different thing entirely. When you miss like if I throw a ball and try to hit something and it doesn't hit it, I would say I miss it. Or if Jen and I are far away from each other, we miss each other. Um Yaroslav says, morning the wisest teacher Bob. Awesome to see you again. No questions today. I remember that process of creating new words is called a conversion, right? I don't know what what is the process the uh process of creating new words called I'm just looking it up for a moment. Ah, yeah, I don't see. Yep. I don't see the process. So, I don't know a lot about creating new words except that in English, it does happen. People make a new word and then a few other people start using it and then eventually, a lot of people start using it. Um Okay, a lot of the questions here today are not on topic but if there aren't a lot of them, I will keep answering them. What's the difference between roll out, roll out to milk and a milk? Greetings from Morocco. So, we wouldn't say a milk first of all. So, you milk a cow or you milk a goat. That's the action that you use to get milk out of that animal um and then we just say milk, okay? You need to buy milk um we're almost out of milk. We don't use the article in front of milk. So, you put milk on your cereal. Um I'm going to have a bowl of cereal. I'm going to put milk on it. Um roll out would be if I have like something I want to unroll. Like, I'm going to roll out the carpet but a roll out is when a store offers something new. That's the difference between the two. Ario. I'm confused what the lesson is about. Sorry about that. It is a little bit of a strange lesson, are you? Could you please tell me about it? In English and I'm sure this is true in other languages, sometimes we can use the same word to describe the thing as well as the action. This is a drink. So, the noun is drink. This is a drink. I can drink this. So, that is the verb or the action. So, sometimes the word that we use 
for the thing, this is a drink, is the same word we use as a verb to drink. I can drink a drink. Thanks, Ario, for that question. Hey, we're gonna pop back to the lesson. Remember, these Friday lessons might be a little bit shorter than what you're used to. We're going to shoot for about 50 minutes. So, I am going to keep moving along. Um and I see Mode also saying that sometimes words can be an adjective as well as a noun. Yes, definitely. I tried to pick words today though where the meanings are similar as well um because there are also um nouns and verbs where um they are a noun it acts as a noun and verb but the meanings are different. So, I tried to keep things um similar this time. Let's uh let's move on though. Oh, I say see Vitor is here too. Hi, Vitor. A drill and to drill. You can see that this lady is holding a drill. A drill is a tool that you use to make a hole in something. She looks like she's working on something and she needs to drill a hole in it. So, she's using a drill. So, once again, the noun a drill. Sometimes you need a drill. You go to the store and you buy a drill because you need to drill holes in something. So, always I keep saying this but a drill is also a handy tool to have. And then, a label and to label. Sometimes at school, I have a lot of different papers and I put those papers in folders to organize them and I like to put a label on each folder. And then, I write on the label what is in there. So, a label is usually a little sticker. Something that will stick to a piece of paper. So, again, a label is something you put on something. The action of doing that is called labeling or to label. So, sometimes at the end of the semester, I will put things in folders and then I will find labels and I will label each folder. I will put a label on each one. So, that things stay organized. Labels are a handy way to keep things organized. I can write the name of each class on the label while I am labeling or while I label the folders. Uh and then we have a flower and two flower. So, these to me look like tulips. I think I've identified them correctly. They might even be parrot tulips. These are flowers. So, we can say that Jen grows flowers on the farm. It's nice when I have a flower and I can smell it. But when when the plant grows, when it gets to the point where this happens, we say that they are flowering. Uh in the spring, sometimes trees will get small buds and then the tree will flower. So, the verb form to flower means when the plant's flowers open up. So, it's nice to buy flowers for people and it's really nice in the spring when uh some of the trees are flowering or in flower. It's nice to see them flower and then you can smell them. Let's see here. A pump and to pump. So, this is obviously a very old pump. This is not what you normally would see when you think of a pump in our modern era. But a pump is a device used to move water or at the gas station, there is a pump that will um, put gas in your car. But the action of using a pump is to pump. So, I will pump gas in my car at the gas station using the gas pump. If I had this in my yard, I could pump water So, the verb form or action, I would pump water using a pump. A vacuum and to vacuum. So, I cheated a little bit on this one. Um I'm not sure if you know what the word cheat means but to cheat is to um kind of force this to work. A vacuum is normally called a vacuum cleaner but the short form is a vacuum. It's the machine you use to clean your floors. So, we have a vacuum. Again, the proper word is vacuum cleaner. We have a vacuum cleaner um but in our house, we often say, have you seen the vacuum? Has anyone seen the vacuum? And we're talking about the machine called a vacuum cleaner. 
you use it to vacuum. Sometimes I vacuum my room on Saturday mornings so that the carpet is clean. Sometimes I say to Jen, have you seen the vacuum? Because I need to vacuum my room. Um and I will say this too. Uh it's a tricky word to pronounce because of when you see it but it actually isn't too bad. Vacuum, vacuum, to vacuum. Glue and to glue. So, glue is something you use when you want to stick two things together. You might want to stick two pieces of paper together. You might want to stick two pieces of wood together. So, you can use glue to do this. When you do that, you are using the verb to glue. I'm going to glue these pieces of paper together. I'm going to glue this uh these two pieces of wood together. So, when you glue something, you use glue. You put some glue on it and then when you do this, when you put the two pieces together, we would say that you are gluing. You are going to glue two things together. When I was a kid in school, this was a very common thing to do. We would often uh do a lot of coloring and we would glue things together and make things. It was always fun when I was a young uh, child at school. A hoe and to hoe. So, a hoe, I'm not sure if you can see this tool is another garden tool and it has a piece of metal at the end. A hoe is used usually to get rid of weeds. Weeds are plants that grow where you don't want them to. So, when you use a hoe, you you could say this. I need the hoe because I need to go hoe the field. So, when you hoe, the action of using the hoe, we use the verb to hoe and the tool itself is called a hoe. Similar to a saw. So, the tool that this lady is using is called a saw. The action she is doing is to saw. She is sawing the board in half. She found the saw Now, she's going to saw the board in half. Now, we do also use the verb to cut when talking about a saw. You can use a saw to cut a board in half. You can also use a saw to uh, saw a board in half. Both are fine. I actually think cut is more common. A more common way to describe using a saw. And then, we have here a lock. And this lock is being used to lock the door. So, a lock is a device that we use. A small little thing we use when we want to close something and not allow other people in. So, then we will lock whatever we want um to prevent people from going in. So, the little thing on this picture is called a lock. This lock is being used to lock the door. When I leave for work, I lock the door. I put my key in the lock, noun. So, I put it in the lock and then when I turn the key, I'm now using the verb to lock. I put my key in the lock and then I lock the door. So, when you have a lock, you use it to lock things. And then we have a dream and to dream. So, a dream is something that happens at night when you're asleep. You can wake up in the morning and say, oh, I had a dream last night. I imagine that I had millions of dollars and I could swim in pavement. Sorry, this is a kind of a weird picture I just realized. But a dream is something that you have at night. When you go to bed though, you might use the verb form to dream and say, I hope that I'm going to dream tonight. I hope that I'm going to dream about something. So, a dream is something that happens at night and to dream is the action of it happening. We also use the word dream to talk about something we want in the future. Um my dream is that my YouTube channel keeps growing. So, sometimes I dream about my YouTube channel getting bigger. That means I'm thinking about it. You might have a dream that you'll be completely fluent in English someday or you might have a dream that you'll someday travel to a country where they speak English and so, you dream about that. So, flipping from uh, noun to verb very easily. Spray and to spray. So, the generic word for anything 
that comes out of a can like this is a spray, okay? Um you might buy a fly spray, you might buy buy. You might buy mosquito spray. When you buy something that when you push the top, it goes and it comes out usually in a vapor. We would call that a spray. This person is using the verb to spray. He thought there are mosquitoes here. I'm going to spray mosquito spray on my arms so that the mosquitoes don't bite me. So, when you buy a spray, when you buy fly spray or mosquito spray, you can spray it on yourself. Uh, don't spray fly spray on yourself though. That's not a good idea. You can spray mosquito repellent or a mosquito spray on yourself but um uh you can don't spray fly spray on yourself. Not a good idea. A shop and to shop. So, again, sometimes you want to buy something. Maybe you want to buy a book. So, you would go to a shop that sells books or you might call it a store. We kind of use the two words interchangeably. For me, a shop is a small store that usually sells one thing like a candy shop or a book shop uh or um yeah, those would be two good examples. So, you can go to a shop because you want to buy something. The action of buying things is to shop. I am going to shop this afternoon. I am going to buy some things. So, you can shop in a shop. You can go to a shop to do um to buy some things and in order to shop. I really like bookshops by the way. They're one of my favorite things. Used bookshops or used bookstores are a fun place uh when you want to go shop. It's a great place to go. By the way, we also say shopping. I'm going to go shopping or I'm going to go shop. Um what are you going to do today? I'm going to go shopping this afternoon. Um I'm not actually though. I'm going to go um to work this afternoon. Paint and to paint. So, sometimes you look at a wall and you don't like the color and you think I should buy paint and then I should paint the wall. So, you go to the store and you buy paint. You buy paint in a can and then when you come home, you open the can and when you start to put the paint on the wall, we say that you are now um painting. You're using the verb to paint. Um this room hasn't been painted for a while. I think I'm going to paint this room this summer. Um just a few weeks ago, uh Jen and I decided to paint another room in our house. So, we went to the hardware store and we bought paint um and then when we came home, we were able to paint the room. Lots of fun. I like new colors. Hey, let's look at some questions and let's also move to members only chat mode. It's a little early but remember all of these Friday lessons, this will just be normal for all of us in a little bit but um everything will just be a little bit earlier as we do it. So, I'm gonna go to members only chat mode. Get that turned on. I'm going to check my audio for a second. Everything sounds good. I'm going to have a sip of water and I'm gonna make sure my camera is still running and then I'll explain what's happening. So, this is members only chat time. Members are people who have clicked the join button below and who have decided to support me in the work I do. My ideal is that I can always work part time at school as a teacher but also that I can do YouTube part time in order to make good lessons for you. In order to do that, I need ad revenue and I need people to support me. So, thank you so much for being here and supporting me. I've also tried one other little thing which I'm not sure if you noticed. I'll talk about that next week maybe but I know a lot of people liked the print of the sunflower which is hidden right now. Um I might actually make those available for purchase. We'll see. But anyways, thank you for being members. We are going to go to members only chat and regular regular question answering. Let me get started here. The <laughs> the first que- question is not a question. Just from sis saying no thanks. Perhaps sis is not excited about the topic. It is a little bit of a strange topic but uh not sure but sis, that's okay. You can always watch a different video or another YouTuber. It's always fine with me. What's important to me is that you're learning English. 
It doesn't have to be with me. Uh, let's see here. Freddie the Frenchie over here and then I'll get to members chat in a moment. Hi, Bob. No question for the moment. I signed an insurance contract versus fortunately, I didn't have the contract a cold so far. Are these sentences correct? No. The first is like I signed an insurance contract. Um that's definitely something you would do. When you have insurance, you sign a contract. We might even call it an agreement or in English, we might just say I got I got insurance. Sounds kind of funny but like I bought a car. I got insurance yesterday and now I can drive it or I bought a house. I need to get insurance. That's probably the most common. Um and then the second. Oh, I see. I didn't contract a cold. So, it's a different pronunciation. Yes. You would get a contract but you would contract a cold. Slightly different pronunciation. A cold is an illness. When you are around people who have colds, you might contract a cold. You might get it as well. Um but the sentence would be, I haven't contracted a cold so far. That's how I would say that second one. Hey, let's look at the chat here. So, Dave's talking. Um Dave said, I just realized edit is another example. Yes. I was trying to find as many as I could where it was easy to find a picture. Edit's a tricky one but yes, when you edit a document, you make an edit. Like, I'm gonna make a little edit here. So, the action and the uh the noun are the same. Lolly, thanks a lot to Dave. Linda says, hi, Bob. Finally, it's convenient rule in English. Verbs and nouns are the same. A piece of cake compared with phrasal verbs. Yes. Just be careful because it doesn't work for every noun. Just some. Ralph says, hello. Nothing to say today. Currently couching from the couch. <laughs> so, Ralph's using a uh, a noun as a verb um that we don't normally do but this is a way that new words are made. Sometimes we take a thing and we make a noun or we make a verb out of it and a good example would be email. You know, um you can send an email and I can also say I'm going to email my mom. So, we do that sometimes. Mode says, yup to Dave. Noriko says to Dave, added a touch of class to this lesson. Thanks. Nice work, Dave. Uh Yaroslav says, let me be let me clear it a little bit. Conversion is a process in linguistics referred to phenomena when word from one part of speech become another verb noun. Ah, gotcha. Yes, that would make sense. So, we decided that email was a noun. You can send an email. So, then we used conversion to decide we're gonna use it as a verb as well. Thanks, Yaroslav. Excellent. And the process of creating new words is called coinage. Cool. Oh, yeah, because you can coin a term, can't you? Yes. Thank you. Great addition. If you're wondering what's happening, I'm answering questions from members in the chat right now and my nose is itchy. Those are the two things that are happening. Uh, I will get back to the lesson though in about six or seven minutes. Freddie Wolf. Hi, Bob. Your lessons are geared towards English learners in order to improve their skills versus the gear stick of a car is used to change gears. Thanks for all your work. Yes. Interesting. Definitely a different use of the word gear but my lessons are geared towards English learners. That means they are designed for English learners whereas the gear stick in the car is used to go from first to second to third. Yaroslav, that's all I remember from history of English at university. I'm sure you remember more than that but that is a good part of it to remember. Mode eggs. I don't wanna bother you today, Mr. Bob. It looks like you got shortchanged on sleep so I'll leave you be. <laughs> yeah, you know, I don't know what's happening. It was very windy last night. It was so windy that we could hear the wind while we were trying to sleep and I did not sleep well. So, you have guessed correctly. Lolly Lolly says, Bob, I said to Dave, I made a mistake in my question. I meant pronunciation, not meaning. Ah, okay. And Dave helped you. Very cool. Hey, let me get another question on the screen here. I do have a few more to get through and I will keep an eye on the chat for members questions as well. Um so, Ferris says, how do we make choices for English? I figured out that Americans love to use idioms and phrases to include a specific scenario and Canadian English is much words oriented. You know, they are very similar. Like, this lesson could easily be branded or labeled as an American English lesson. I would say that 
your distinction maybe isn't totally true. Americans and Canadians are very similar. Um I would say this is a North American English lesson um for sure. Uh Lob Sang says, hi teacher Bob. I am first time come to your this is my first time being at a live lesson. A little fix there or this is the first time that I'm coming to a live lesson. I have no question but I wanna say thank you teacher. You are welcome. Thank you for popping in and leaving that. Noriko, is it weird when we use the same word in one sentence twice? Like I need glue. We don't use ah. We I need glue to glue two pieces of paper. Is this a natural sentence? Yes. Yeah. Do you know where the glue is? I need to glue some paper together. Um I need to um I need to write an email and email it to my mom. We we do that all the time, right? Where's the shovel? I need to shovel some dirt. Um yes, we definitely. Whether it's in the same sentence, maybe not as much but definitely in two sentences beside each other um for sure. Um Lolly Lolly, bonjour Bob, a message and to message. Same pronunciation, thanks. Yes. So, I need to send a message to them. I need to message them. Definitely. And then, Lolly Lolly says, oh, I did that one already. Harry 300, I just googled Bob's channel. Then, I just realized you started the live stream about 30 minutes ago. So, sad I'm late. So, Harry, sorry about that. I have a different schedule this semester and I have to be at work earlier. So, the live Friday lessons will be an hour earlier for about four and a half months. It also means that I I might look a little bit tired because I had to get up earlier. So, sorry about that. Uh let's see here. Vitor says hi to Harry. Yaroslav says some time ago also at university, I heard a new word to cannon which means to print something by a cannon printer. Blow my mind so far. We don't use cannon but we do use the word Xerox or we used to. So, you could Xerox something which meant to make a copy. People don't say that as much anymore. Older people might say that. Uh people saying hi to Harry. Nice to see. Uh Huawei says, please call me when you are free. I'm glad to get a call from you. I don't really call people. If I started calling people, I would be spending my whole day calling people. I do what I can do which is to make lessons and that has to be enough. Um Can you say to light the light? No, Zeev, we wouldn't say that. You would turn the light on or you would turn the light off. Whoa, I just turned the light off. I should turn the light back on again. Don't worry, my camera will adjust in a moment and it will go back to normal. So, no, um yeah, you don't, you don't, I can't think of a time. You can use a light to light an area Like you could say this room is dark. We need to buy more lights to light it up more. So, there is a little bit of a a time where you could use it I guess but not generally no. You turn a light on. Um John Francis says, how could I be part of the lesson? I mean like joining and be able to send a message even when only members mode is on. So, you could always send a question using the form. Um and members just get a little perk where they can ask questions directly uh, in the middle of the lesson. So, no one is excluded from asking questions. Just the way is slightly different and it lets me get to know members a bit more because after all, they are being kind to me. It's fun for me to get to know them. Amran says, hi, Bob. How are you? I'm good. I'm a little tired but that's okay. Um Here's another one from Iwa. What about Google and to Google? Do they work this way? Yes. So, you can Google something. Um I think in fact, didn't someone just mention that? Yes, Harry said, I just Googled Bob's channel. So, Harry used Google to look me up. He used Google to Google me. So, that would definitely work for sure. Okay, let's see here in the chat. Yaroslav says, there's some specific site where you can find new English, where you can find new English words. Little correction, can't remember where it is. Yeah, I don't know either where that is. Okay, give me a moment here. I know this might seem like it wasn't quite 10 minutes. I will get my timing better but I'm going to turn off members only chat and I am going to finish off the lesson. So, let me get all that set up. 
Uh, Zeev, last member's question. What's the weather now, teacher Bob? It's rainy and muddy. It, the, like the informal description I would give is it's gross outside. My shoes always have mud on them. It's not very nice. I wish it would either get colder or dry up. One of the two. Uh, let's get back to the lesson though and I might end up going a bit quicker. We'll see. Here we go. So, here's a few simple ones. You use a brush to brush your hair and you use a comb to comb your hair. So, a brush has I think you know what a brush is. It has a lot more little pointy things and you use it to brush your hair and a comb is thinner and just has some teeth on it and you use it to comb your hair. Both of these things you use the noun. You use brush. I need to find a brush. I need to find a comb because I want to brush my hair or I want to comb my hair. So, very um very cool examples of nouns that are also verbs. And this is something not everyone does but you use floss to floss your teeth. This person is flossing their teeth. I'm going to brush my teeth and I'm going to floss my teeth after this lesson before I go to work. In order to do that, I will use floss. So, once again, using the same word to describe the thing, floss, as well as the action, to floss. And this one has come up a couple of times. Sometimes you need to send an email to someone. Sometimes you need to email someone. So, you can talk about the thing which is an email. I need to write an email to my mom because I might visit her tomorrow. I need to email my mom because I might visit her tomorrow. Notice the difference there. In the first one, I'm using the noun. I'm going to write an email. In the second one, I'm using the verb. I'm going to email my mom. So, you can use it as a noun. You can use it as a verb. I think this actually might make English more confusing. I thought this made English easier but the more I think about it, this might make it harder. Uh, a smell and to smell. So, there's a couple variations here. Something like a flower or herbs or spices have a smell. They when you go like this, you can see that they have a smell. Sometimes um when you use the verb to smell though, you can use it two ways. You can say that if you um let's see if you put that deodorant on you're going to smell or I'm going to smell these flowers because they're beautiful. So, to smell can mean to give off an aroma. It can also mean to go like that to see if something has a smell. I'm not sure if I explain that one really well but definitely things uh can have a smell and sometimes you're going to smell something and then you can smell its smell. That was really confusing. <laughs> An exit and to exit. Sometimes when you are in a building, you want to leave. So, you look for the exit. An exit is the door that you use to leave a building. At the back of a building, there might be a door and above it, it might say exit. You can use the exit to exit. Sometimes when there's a problem, they'll say everyone needs to exit the building. There's a fire in the kitchen at the restaurant. Everyone needs to exit the building. When they say this, when they use the verb to exit, you would look for an exit. So, you would hear that you need to exit. You would need to look for an exit and then you would exit the building using the exit. I like that sentence by the way. You would exit the building using the exit. If you ever go out in a kayak or in a canoe, you will use a paddle in order to make the canoe or kayak go forward. You will paddle. The action is to paddle. You will paddle the kayak using a paddle. It's hard to paddle the kayak when your paddle falls in the water. That happened to me once and then I had to paddle with my hands in order to get my paddle back. I've just said paddle a lot in the last few sentences but the paddle or a paddle is something you use uh in order to propel the boat forward and the action is to paddle. More recently too in the last uh century, we've developed something called the phone 
uh, you can have a phone in your pocket. I think I lost my phone. It might be on my charger. I can use my phone to phone someone. So, when I need to talk to my mom, I will phone my mom using my phone. Sometimes, I can't find my phone and then I can't phone my mom because I can't find my phone. So, the actual device is called a phone. That's the noun. Using the vi- the device to make a call is is to phone someone, okay? When you're texting, you're not phoning. You're texting. You can send, you can text someone a text by the way. You can message someone a message as well. Uh let's see here. Uh a vote and to vote. When we have an election, I go and I am allowed to cast a vote. Every person gets a single vote in an election. So, the actual piece of paper is a vote. You get to decide who you want as a leader. The action is called to vote. Sometimes, there's an election and Jen and I will go to vote in the evening. I don't usually go vote during the day. I usually go vote or I go to vote at night because it's easier and there's less people there. A cheat and to cheat. Now, there are actually two versions of the word a cheat. Someone who does this, who has the answers in their hand while doing a test, we would say that they are a cheat or we might call them a cheater. I actually think cheater might be more common. Like, you're a cheater. If you're playing a game with someone and when they roll the dice, they flip one of the dice to be a different number, you would probably say you're a cheat or you're a cheater. The action of doing that is to cheat. It is not good to cheat on a test. It's bad. You should never cheat on tests. Otherwise, you are a cheat or you are a cheater. And then we have things like a cough and to cough. Sometimes people are sick. Just last week, one of my kids was sick. Uh she had a cough. We could hear her coughing. So, when you have a cough, the When you see someone do this, you would say that that is a cough. The action though is to cough. Sometimes during my live lessons, I get a tickle in my throat and I have to cough. I should drink some water because I actually just have a little bit of a tickle. Uh, But definitely, um, if you go to the doctor, the doctor might say, oh, do you have a cough Uh, or have you been coughing? So, they might ask using the noun or the verb. Do you have a cough or have you been coughing? Well, hey, that is the end of the regular part of the lesson. I'm going to finish up with a few questions. There's a couple questions left and then we will wrap this lesson up. I feel like this lesson went really fast. I also feel like it was a little bit confusing. So, hopefully, you have a chance to watch it again um but uh let's get the last questions done and we will wrap this lesson up. So, from Fabian. Hi, teacher Bob. Thank you for this interesting English lesson. I have a question. Call could be used like a noun and verb. Greetings from Columbia. Yes, I have to make a call or I'm going to call someone. It's very similar to phone. Um so, the Or email, I think would be better. Yes. So, you need to send an email. You need to email someone. You could also say, hey, hey boss, uh, I just need to step into the hallway because I have to make a call or I have to call someone or I have a call coming in. I need to take this call. So, you would, uh, yes, you could definitely use it both ways. Good example, Fabian. Uh, Let's see here. Alexi the Far Eastern. Hi, Bob. I see in spoken English, you can turn almost any noun into a verb. I believe it is called verbing but it also seems like the internet turned the verb like into a noun. Yes. Give me a like. Yep. So, you can uh, like someone by giving them a like. Yeah. But on YouTube, it's a thumbs up but yes, definitely. Um, I should look into that. Maybe that's a better title for this lesson. Verbing. I'll do some research on it before I change the thumbnail. So, let's go to no display. Let me just check the chat. Modag says, the confusing part for me about this is that sometimes the noun and verb will have the same pronunciation but other times it changes. Yes. 
Uh, and I tried to make sure I didn't choose those. Like it changes in use and excuse or use and excuse or excuse, sorry. But it doesn't in increase. Yes, definitely. So, yes, you can use something uh, because it has a lot. Yeah, you can use something because it has a lot of uses. And then you can excuse someone because they have an excuse. So, I don't wanna get into the details but yes, sometimes we do that. That makes it even more confusing. Ralph said, thumbs up for the lesson topic. Helps a lot to me. Often using the same word twice feels faulty but seems to be okay in English. Yeah, definitely. Um let me scroll back here. I think I'm gonna wrap this up. I think um I'm gonna head off to work. John says, it's my first time being on a live stream and it's been fun so far. Thanks, Bob, Victor, Lolly Lolly, Harry 300 and Dave the Canadian. You guys are wonderful. Thanks for making John feel welcome, all of you. That's awesome. Uh, Ruslan says, I've never been able to cheat on my test so I just studied. Yeah, you're better off studying than cheating. Studying is always better. Um yeah. Anyways, folks, I'm going to wrap this up. Few things before I go. Do check out my YouTube shorts. I'm not sure where you find them. Uh, do have a look. Uh, also, this lesson will come out in a shorter version. Great to just re-listen to it or re-watch it at some point. Um, it will help you remember the things I've taught. Repetition is always a good thing to do when you are learning English. And then, just a big thank you. Uh, I've done a few things differently on my channel this week. A lot more shorts, a few stories. Um, I'm just playing around with what my new schedule will be. Nothing that I normally do will change. There will always be a video on Tuesdays. There will always be a live stream on Fridays. There will always be a live lesson the first Saturday of the month but I am just playing around with other little things I can do to help you learn English. Thanks to Dave for hanging out and thanks to all of you. I'm not able to say bye to everyone. Uh well, I'll do it quickly. Bye to Vitor and Lolly Lolly, Eugene, Mode Eggs, Maxim, Freddie Wolf, Noriko, Harry 300, uh, Ruslan, Ario, Ralph, Noriko, John, I'm saying names twice, Vitor, Eugene, Ruslan, Yaroslav, John, Francis, uh, bye to all of you. Bye, Linda, Wanda Prado. Um, let's see here, Marcio. Bye, everybody. I gotta run. I gotta get to work. Have a great day and I'll see you uh, Tuesday with a new lesson and I'll see you next Friday with another live English lesson. So, thanks for watching.